Well, hello there, hello there. God bless you. It's your girl, Benita. This week, we're going to have a little mini-series. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Just a couple of minutes I'm going to spend with you. And we're going to be talking about, are you a spiritual beggar? Yeah. (laughs) You'll understand it in a few minutes. On today, we are going to describe what a spiritual beggar is. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about what is really the issue going on behind the scenes if we are spiritual beggars. And on Friday, we're going to talk about the resolve. How do we get to a place that we're not living in emotional poverty? Amen. So let's first of all, let's start with, and we thank God for being with us. It says here, A beggar in the natural is a person who's typically a homeless one. So the person, in many instances, does not have a place of safety. They don't have shelter. And that person lives or they exist. They get their needs met by asking, taking the risk of asking for money or food. So, so see, your money and your food is the um, substance or the vehicle of providing the need for the beggar. And so the beggar is asking somebody else to give them what they need. Also says here, again, a beggar is a person who lives, again, by asking for gifts. So this individual is... At the emotional beck and call, or they are at the they are vulnerable to the response of what other people will or will not do, and they have to ask. They're in a place of vulnerability. Their needs are not being met, and they have to ask for what they need. And if that person doesn't give them what they need, then they go without. They have to find somebody else. So they live their lives trying to get their needs met through what somebody else has. Amen. So when we think about this spiritually, it looks a little differently than a person just literally asking for something that they need. Even though that's really what they're doing they may be providing help. So a spiritual beggar can be an individual who is so intense when it comes to helping you. You may have something, a project that you want done, and so this person may volunteer, and um, they're gung-ho. They're more gung-ho than you are. But you notice that they're gung-ho like that all of the time when it comes to helping. They just love to help people, and that's what it looks like until they don't get to help you, okay? Something may happen. You may end up choosing somebody else to assist you, and now this person is emotionally devastated. Or you might be the person. You are just torn up when someone else is chosen to do something that you wanted to do. Or maybe, you know, you were asked to, uh, volunteers were asked, and you know that you have the skills to do it, and you know that you have the ability and the talent to do it, and, excuse me, and you're not asked to do it. You're sitting right there with all those gifts and talents. And in your mind, you have a thought that you are being looked over. You have a thought that somehow someone else is being preferred above you simply because you were not. And that is is all that you think. That's the, the totality of your mind. There they go again, choosing somebody over me. Or... Maybe you go you go to a great extent. You want to make sure that you give the greatest amount of this, that, and the other. And the issue is, it's not that you want to give it. You may have a giving heart. But when it's not accepted, 
then you don't get the gratification that you were looking for. You were looking for gratification. You were begging for gratification. And when you did this, you didn't get the gratification or it's short-lived. So if it's short-lived, then you find somebody else to give. You may your your bank account might be on almost zero, not because you're taking care of necessarily your own needs, but you're trying to take care of the needs of everybody else. Because when you do that, there's a gratification that you had that you you needed it. You needed that gratification. And so you begged for it. Amen. You took the risk over and over again. You take the risk of pleasing someone else so that you can feel good about you. And then if they don't, if they don't accept it for whatever the reason, you take that personally. Are you a spiritual beggar? I want you to think about that. I know that God showed me in my walk that I have been right there. And that was one of the fertile, a place of fertile ground or a fertile ground that the enemy used to draw me into um, a life of depression and anxiety simply because I was not able to get my fix. I was not able to be gratified unless I was helping someone. There were times I wanted to help people, like I said, more than they wanted to be helped. I just had to help them. And I thought that it was simply because I had a gracious heart to do so. But really... It was me. I had a need. And I was begging them to allow me to do something so that my need would be satisfied. Just like that beggar is asking someone for money or food so that their need to be satisfied, their essential need can be satisfied. I want you to think about it. And I want to let you know that, you know, the enemy uses different um, masks to try to keep us ignorant of things that are really going on on the inside of us. And we may just say, I like to help folk. I just love helping people. But are we thirsty for that to the point that we sometimes put ourselves in jeopardy we put our finances in jeopardy do we feel that whenever someone says that they have a need that we have to be the person who um meets that need i want you to really think about that i want you to really think about if that's healthy and you don't we don't ask the spirit of God is this is this something that you want me to be involved in and then sometimes we misappropriate funds because we didn't know we were going to need some money in a couple of weeks for something that was going to happen to us but we just had to give to do you know to someone else in order for them to do something that they needed and we felt so good about it and then in a couple of weeks We don't even have money. And now, a lot of times we're offended because nobody (laughs) is there for us. Amen. And then sometimes we then begin to move into a victim mentality. It's just an emotional web. And so we need to get to the bottom of that. Yes, it's wonderful to give. It's a part of what we do. But what is the motive behind our giving? Are we giving to help those in need and being led by the Spirit? Or are we giving to help meet our needs to be needed? Are you a spiritual beggar? 
I want to let you know there is hope. Meet me on Wednesday and we're going to talk about what the real issue is. God bless you.